Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our second human factors lesson. We're going to be talking about pilot, the pilot and operating environment. I have a nice little picture to start us off. See if you can recognize where this is from. It is from the Learn to Fly music video by Foo Fighters, which probably remains the funniest music video that I've seen, although I don't think it would be uh, too acceptable today, but it is still quite comical. So let's get started. Fortunately, uh, this stuff is pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. I'm not sure why I have to cover it, but it's pretty obvious. You should try to maintain a state of health and fitness, not being fit, increases fatigue and reduces performance. Obviously, got the boring sticker. Diet and nutrition. Your mom says eat your vegetables. Again, same thing. Okay, let's move on to something a bit less obvious. Some medications, antihistamines and motion sickness medication. Those are gravel, diphenhydramine, those would be Benadryl, these cold medications that cause drowsiness. You should wait 24 hours between taking them and operating an aircraft. Sulfa drugs can cause visual disturbances, dizziness, impaired reaction time, should have 48 hours. Cannabis, because it is uh, lipid soluble, it doesn't clear as readily as alcohol, which dissolves in uh, liquids. Transport Canada says that you must wait 30 days between consuming cannabis and flying an aircraft. The general rule is not to take any medications when you plan to fly, except on the advice of an aviation medical examiner. When flying, you are not allowed to have any blood alcohol content. You must wait 12 hours between the time you drink and you fly, and you can have no longer be under the influence of alcohol. Also, you are not allowed consuming illicit drugs and flying. Ladies, uh, you may fly into your 30th week of pregnancy. That's the general rule. After that, you would want to consult with your aviation medical examiner if you haven't already. And incidentally, I think this is a preemie. This is uh, how a baby looks like at 30 weeks of age. It's pretty cute. Let's talk about hypothermia. Now you might think, well, when can hypothermia occur? Well, I know. When you fly in an airplane, the heater breaks and it's minus 40 outside, you can get hypothermic. Hypothermia is a low core body temperature. So this happened to me one time, I was flying a Piper Navajo from Prince George, British Columbia to Regina, Saskatchewan. We took off in the middle of January or February and the Piper Navajo has what's called a janitrol heater. It is a, a gasoline heater that blows uh, hot air into the cabin and generally works very well. However, if it overheats, there can be a circuit breaker that trips. The older Navajos, the circuit breaker could only be accessed from outside uh, through a maintenance panel. The newer ones had a, a way of resetting this. Anyway, uh, it failed. It was very cold. I was in a shirt and tie and leather shoes, a jacket, uh, but there's a good chance I ended up with first stage hypothermia. First stage hypothermia is you're cold, shivering, you have reduced circulation to the extremities. The second stage, you end up irritable, slow, you have a weak pulse and breathing, you end up sleepy. And then the st third stage, you end up losing consciousness, you have a slower absent pulse and breathing. Con uh, by contrast, hyperthermia is when you have a high core body temperature. What happens when you're working outside strenuously in a hot summer day? Uh, here's another boring stamp on noise and vibration. Noise and vibration increases fatigue. No kidding. Blurring of the eyes can happen at a vibration of 40 hertz. Here's a nice picture of a woman who's been uh, smoking for three years. This woman's actually 27 years old. Effects of smoking, you have less tolerance to altitude, so hypoxia, typically 4,000 feet less than somebody who's not a smoker. Three cigarettes at sea level increases the physiological altitude to 8,000 feet. Let's talk about some toxic hazards, including carbon monoxide. Now, I went into this in our last Human Factors course, and I'd like to go into it a bit more. In this picture, you see uh, a heat muff uh, 
from an exhaust from looks like a, any small single engine general aviation aircraft. And this is an extreme example. It is cracked. And what happens is air enters this muff and the exhaust runs through it. When it's cracked, the exhaust can get into the cabin heat system. Therefore, most uh, piston engine aircraft have an airworthiness directives that specifies that you have to check this uh, heat muff at least once a year or 150 hours. If carbon monoxide does get in the cabin, there's a risk of anemic hypoxia. The carbon monoxide is colorless, tasteless, and odorless, so it makes it difficult to detect. The symptoms you will see or will suffer from are headache and confusion. If this does happen to you, you want to open vents and shut off the heater and land as soon as possible. Let's review. You should wait 24 hours after taking antihistamines and flying, and 30 days between flying and consuming cannabis products. You want to uh, wait 12 hours since your last drink to fly, have zero blood alcohol contents, and have no effects of alcohol. Tobacco will reduce tolerance to altitude, and carbon monoxide poisoning can occur uh, from the exhaust, causing headache and confusion. Okay, first question. Many common drugs such as cold tablets, cough mixtures, antihistamines, and other over-the-counter medicines remedies may seriously impair the judgment and coordination needed while flying. The safest rule is to A, read the manufacturer's warning to ensure that you are aware of possible reaction to such drugs. Uh, may be true, but probably not the best answer. B, take no medicine when you plan to fly except on the advice of an aviation medical examiner. Uh, that sounds like good advice. I think that's correct. C, allow at least 12 hours between taking any medicines or drugs and flying. D, allow at least eight hours between taking medicine or drugs and flying. So if you recall, it's actually you should wait uh, 24 hours after taking cold tablets, but B is the most correct answer. Don't take any medicine when you plan to fly except on the advice of an aviation medical examiner. You are flying in the winter and develop confusion. What should you do? A, take an aspirin. B, turn off the cabin heater, open vents, land ASAP. C, turn on cabin heat. D, drink some water. So. It's a bit of a giveaway. In the winter, you're likely to have a cabin heat on. What is one of the major problems with the cabin heat or one of the major risks? Well, if it cracks, you could develop carbon monoxide poisoning, which will cause confusion. So a good chance is this is carbon monoxide poisoning. If you suspect it, well, you should shut off the cabin heater, open the vents, and land ASAP. B is correct. Okay, that concludes this second lesson on human factors. Thanks for uh, joining me today, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Actually, at this point, I should mention that you have now covered sufficient material uh, of what is covered on the pre-solo air regulations test, or PSTAR test. You need this test as a condition of being issued a student pilot permit. So I would now encourage you to start working through the PSTAR study guide, there are 200 questions in the guide, and 50 of those questions will be randomly chosen for your PSTAR test. You have to get 90% on the PSTAR test, which is quite high, but you will have seen all the questions in advance. So I encourage you to get that PSTAR done now. Good luck.